What's going on everybody? It's Robinson DUP here, DUP here in my headquarters. No, I'm not going to refilm this. I am too tired. Um, I did post a uh, thing on my Instagram about doing a Q&A, so I figure I have a couple minutes. I'll do them now. Sorry if I'm talking a little low, but the baby's asleep. So, here we go. Uh, first question I got for Cam Fitness was, did you get dad strength, aka noticeable difference in strength after the birth of your baby? I would love to say yes. However, I'm extremely sleep deprived. So would I say I have dad strength? No. Um, I have just enough strength to get in the gym and lift. However, I'm still getting strength gains based on my plan that I have written out. Um, however, if anybody ever messed with my son, probably would have dad strength. Sorry about your neck. That's my client, James. He asks, how to build monster calves? I could crack a joke here about your arms, James, but I'm not going to. <laughs> anyway, um, in regards to calves or getting any muscle larger is usually due to progressive overload. So, in the case of calves, I would recommend, um, obviously, lifting heavier weights to overload your calves. Um, you know, heavy calf raises, things like that. Um, I wouldn't go over anything, probably reps of eight, and I would look to really focus on both the eccentric and concentric parts of the movement um, to strain the muscle in both directions while using full range of motion, because in the long run, I believe that'll get you a, a bigger, fuller muscle. However, calves, as well as most other muscles, as you know, there is some genetics that come into play, so you may never have the largest calf in the world. However, you will make your calves larger. Uh, Matt Benino, another client of mine, uh, says, what are your expectations for Sean in 2017? Sean is a, a guy that works out at our gym. My expectations for Sean is that he's going to have at least, at least a 350-pound squat by the end of the year, and I'm guessing close to a 400-pound deadlift by the end of the year. On the bench, I'm not quite sure yet, but let's say 225. Uh, no, he may have him more than that. You may have more than that. I'm sorry, Sean, if I messed that up. If you have more, I apologize. But those are what my numbers I think are going to be. Golf Girl 70 asks, what is the difference between whey protein and whey isolate, and which is better? I wouldn't say one is better than the other. Um, they're just different. Uh, whey isolate is basically the protein has been filtered a little bit extra, where some of the extra fat and carbs and junk has been taken out. Maybe you get a little bit more of a pure protein content, maybe like 90% versus 80% in a whey concentrate. Um, the big difference is price. Whey isolate is more expensive. Um, and I also recommend it for people who may have um, a lactose issue. So it helps there. Uh, so if you're low on calories or you're you know, looking for a pure protein source and you're willing to spend the extra bucks in whey isolate, but a whey concentrate should more than cut it. Um, Allison Patrice, what are some exercises you hate and won't do? Uh, I don't know if I particularly hate any exercise. It's more of what looks like socially acceptable, and you know what I'm getting at. Um, doing things like hip thrusters and glute bridges and cable pull-throughs are a little awkward to see a male do. Um, I know it's awkward for females, but I guess it's more socially acceptable. Um, I don't think I, I really hate anything. I, I've kind of been pushing myself to do things like zerchers and Jefferson squats and all kinds of awkward angles and positions just to challenge myself and do something different. Continuing on... Uh, Hey, what happened? Technical error. Hold on. There we go. Penny May Lesperance asks, how many days of weightlifting in a week is preferred for maximum muscle growth? Um, once again, I think this is one of those type of questions that's um, asking for like optimal, and I don't think there's enough study or literatures out study or studies or literature out there kind of going over this. Um, me personally, I think it, it depends on the athlete and their genetics and what they're looking to accomplish. Me personally, I like to be in the gym about five days a week. Um, and I feel like that gets me enough to work on the big three lifts as well as work on accessory work without living in the gym. Um, you can make significant progress with three to four days, I think, if you, if you planned it out right. So it's a matter of preference. I mean, I just don't recommend living in the gym ever. I just don't think it's worth it. And the last question was, what's my current diet like? And I get asked this all the time. I don't know what the obsession with my diet is. But if you've watched any of my previous videos, I am very much into flexible dieting, uh, if it fits your macros approach. So, I mean, I eat relatively you know, clean, if that's what you want to call it, healthy. I mean, I eat a lot of chicken, tuna, you know, lean meats, things like that. I'm not big on veggies, even though I should be. Um, something I definitely need to start working into my diet, but I just... 
hate vegetables. I just hate them. So, um, you know, I'm probably eating around 210 to 220 grams of protein, 300 to 333, uh, three, 300 to 330 grams of carbs, and around 60 grams of fat a day. Um, whatever that caloric total comes out to right now, I don't know. I haven't, I'm not tracking my macros as closely as I would, um, as if I were in contest prep. So I've been eating a little bit more instinctively, trying to enjoy some more of the fun foods, um, you know, like pizza and wings and occasional beer here and there, just because I hardly ever do that, but I know how to monitor myself and uh, not overdo it. So guys, thank you so much for all the questions. I greatly appreciate it. I look forward to doing this again, and I will talk to you guys soon.